think, uh, first of all, I'll stick around uh, after we're done for just football. You know, obviously, uh, these five players are up here for a reason. Um, and this issue is about Saturday night, five players knelt at a college football game when the national anthem was played. And I think a good place to start is that they had every right to do that, uh, legally, morally, ethically. Uh, I support them 100%. I feel more strongly now than ever that our football team is unified and that our football team is really a big part of the solution moving forward, uh, not the problem. Um, the first reaction to our football team when I met with them yesterday, met with these guys, totally was that they were shocked that it happened. Um, the word ambush was mentioned. Um, we talked through a lot of the things. Ultimately, the anthem was played, and all of us are responsible for our actions. That's all that really matters. And these guys have taken full responsibility. I'm very proud of them. I support them 100%. The second thing I think, just to get context to this, is obviously in the NFL, this has been going on for over a year. NFL football teams, grown men that are paid a lot of money, they bring in public relations consultants, owners have advisors, players have their agents, you have NFL reps, former players, former players in the franchise that played that were players for the franchise. Huge amount of money and time go into protecting the brand, both of the players in the NFL and the teams of the NFL. A huge amount of money goes into protecting the brand. There's still no right way to handle it, as we can see in the NFL. There's no absolute right way to handle a situation like this. With all that money, all that conversation, and now you take a college football team and young men who are surprised when the national anthem is played and we expect them to react a certain way. Uh, I'm, I'm honestly disappointed. I, I understand that when someone kneels, uh, you know, I went on a USO tour to the Middle East um, several years ago, spent five days in the Middle of East, Middle East. Uh, I understand that when somebody kneels, there's gonna be a reaction to that. There's gonna be a strong reaction to that. And, and I, I respect that. I respect that. Not everybody's going to see things through the same lens. And everybody has a right to see it the way they see it. There will be a strong reaction, though. But I am disappointed in the narrative so quickly going to they did this out of disrespect for the military. They did, did this out of disrespect for the Air Force Academy. Um, they should be taken off scholarship. I will never come to another game if these players play in the game. That narrative is divisive. And that narrative is hateful. And I think it's very important that we do this here today. And I give them a lot of credit for being here. So that you take the helmets off these players for a second. And it's not just some figure kneeling there. It's a person. It's a person who thought at that moment when they were surprised that maybe they were doing the right thing. Take that into account. Let's take the helmet off these kids a second here and stop a second. I understand everybody's going to have their opinion no matter how this unfolds. This is a very volatile time in this country. I understand that. I'm not sure anybody thinks this is a great time in this country. So maybe some way in our own little world here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and this New Mexico football team, maybe we can use this as a real positive. Maybe we can take a second here and have five kids sitting in front of us and put it all in context of how this happened before we go down a narrative of hatefulness. 
I think that's fair to ask. I think any conversation is fair to have. And, and let me finish with this. My job here is to educate and prepare kids and prepare this football team and this coaching staff. I take responsibility for this. Yeah, I was never given the opportunity, never in my wildest dreams, that I think we would ever be out there when the national anthem was played. Never did I think that. We had talked about this issue. But I apologize to these guys because if this would have handled the right way, in my opinion, and we would have had time, there would have been a complete show of solidarity. And their voices would have been heard. And all their voices of their teammates would have been heard. But nobody would be singled out. Nobody's name would be written and out there across the country. Um, CBS Sports wouldn't be putting a camera on a kid on the sidelines and saying another player when it wasn't that player. It would have been a total show of solidarity where this football team was expressing on behalf of all their teammates and all their coaches their views. So I've talked enough here. Um, I'm very proud of these players and have at it. I think Garrett's going to start this off and just speak for himself. Garrett Hughes. Yes, sir. Um, I don't think me or any of us took a knee for anything negative. Um, we took a knee for something that we believe in. We took a knee to stand with Kaepernick against injustice um, in America right now. Um, we didn't do it to disrespect the flag or there was honestly no negative connotation with the kneel, it was a positive, um, how can I put it? It was a positive protest, for better use of words. Um, we took a need for something that we believe in, point blank. Kimmy, uh, you know, Kimmy's dad, uh, by the way, I've been in Kimmy's home uh, as I've been in Garrett's. Kimmy's dad is a Vietnam veteran. Um, Kimmy, anything you want to add? Uh, I just want to start off by saying uh, I, don't, I didn't mean no disrespect to no military service or no veterans. I don't think none of these guys up here did. Um, like I said, um, uh, we're we doing this for a cause. It's for a positive reason. Uh, I have, I'm come from a military background, so, you know, it's no disrespect from, from me and my teammates. So that's all I really got to say. Thank you, guys. Um, um, you know, I think if you – uh, want to ask some questions, feel free to do that. If any of you guys, Mike, Stanley, Lil, if any of you guys want to add anything, if you feel like the players that just spoke represent you, um, then just let's ask some questions here and let's, um, let, let's move on. Uh, Garrett, uh, I'm under the impression that you guys had only seconds right. to decide whether to kneel or not. Uh, just two questions. What went just what went through your mind at that moment? Uh, why did you decide to kneel? And uh, how surprised are you, if you are, to be up here talking about it three days later because it's caused such a storm? Uh, with the last question, I'm not surprised at all. I knew we were going to have a press conference. Um, Coach Davey put it in the best way. I think anybody could have. We felt ambushed almost. I look up and I just see a flag up there and me and a couple of the team of my teammates, we had previously talked about the cap incident, about players kneeling way prior to this game. So it had been in the back of my mind, but when you're put in a position where you have a split second to think of a decision, it basically just becomes instinct. And I took a knee off of my belief, but off of instinct having not even a minute to think about it. Kimmy? Garrett, uh, do Let you. Let Kimmy answer this, okay? Oh, what's that now? It's like Kimmy answering okay. the question as well, okay? Hey, hey, Kimmy, uh, do Just you feel. Answer the question? Yeah, hold on. Kimmy's got to finish. Oh, okay. Um, um, uh, like, like Garrett said, uh, you know, we look up just uh, as the second quarter was ending, uh, national anthem is being played. Uh, we had no idea. Um, like 
if we if we had if we had an idea, we would have had a whole plan, a whole preparation thing. You know, uh, we didn't have none of that. It's kind of just we were just left out there to make a decision on our own, and and we did, and we went with what we, what we believe in. So we took that knee. I didn't know what you were saying. I That's okay. You. Go ahead, Van. <laughs> yeah, Garrett. Um, could you all just talk about the frustration from this? I mean, it's like you're trying to say something about injustice, but nobody wants to hear what you have to say. And you're doing it peacefully. You're not making a lot of noise about it. You're just, you're taking a knee, but, but then somebody else wants to mold the message and take what you're trying to say and just completely change it to something else. Can you talk about how frustrating that is? Uh, I wouldn't use the word frustrated because everybody has their own specific opinion. Um, my opinion was to stand for something I believe in. Um, it was positive, but like I said, everybody has their own outtake on things, so I can't get frustrated about somebody having a feeling. Um, I'm going to just stand for what I believe in, and we all stood for what we believe in. Based on the reaction of you know what came about because of this, do any of the guys regret doing uh, taking a knee? Um, would you do it again if given the same opportunity? And for Coach Davey, since you have had a little time to discuss it, though likely probably never going to be presented with this scenario again, if it does come up, have you guys talked about? Yeah, I'll speak to that exactly. Every, every person would have their opportunity to speak their beliefs. And just like when that ball snapped, all 11 guys have to be on the same page. And a team is an umbrella for all of us to be under when times of adversity hit. And that's what, to me, is so unfortunate about this, that these five players up here, even more so because of the context of how this happened, are not under the umbrella and the protection of this football team because that's what a team is. So I think I can answer for all of them that – I don't think any of them in conversations this morning would change their beliefs on anything. It's just I think all of them wish there would have been time to do it in our own setting and to symbolically have a show of support for each and every one, that everyone's views would be under the protection of this football team, which I think is only fair. You guys are out there for a national anthem. Does everyone plan to take a knee in, you know, Let's unison? Let's put it this way. Or? It'll be different than, than it was. But to, to the first question, too, none of the guys uh, regret. Um, I most definitely don't uh, regret it at all. I'd take a knee if I had to again. But as Coach Davey said, we as a team uh, unite together and come up with something to where it's not just five guys taking a knee or – to where five guys are just putting this position that we're in right now. And to uh, to add on what Gary said and the question you asked, uh, no, I don't regret it because it's what I believe in, and I do believe that it needs to be a change in the world because, you know, racial inequality is something that is real and is seen throughout everywhere, especially from where I came from, growing up from, I was around it a lot. And, you know, I feel like by us taking a knee, we're just uh, going, out, going out our way to let everybody know that we're standing for something that is positive. And so, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't regret it. And if it was to happen, I would do it again and stand by it. Um, uh, I just like to everybody who's watching this and listening, uh, just to take a, just take a time just to look at why we're kneeing, kneeing instead of looking at us being, if that makes sense. Um, to answer your question, no, I don't regret it. Cap been going through what he's been going through for almost more than a year now. I decided to take a knee because I stand behind what he did. I feel like I can't do much right now. But what I can do, being a student athlete, and being on TV and all that, I can stand behind something. Cap did what he did, and it made me look at it different. Maybe me taking a knee would make somebody else look at it different. So, no, I don't regret it. Sure. And um, another thing I would like to add is I know it's multiple people in the position who will want to go out there and make a change. And it's not just we're not the only student athletes who will go out there and take a knee because I'm pretty sure it's more than just us. It's more than what people see who have been through something 
And I'm sure they want change to happen too because it's not okay and nobody should ever feel like they should have to walk, um, watch their back as they're walking down the street just because of the color of their skin or because they don't look how people expect them to look. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I feel like we didn't do it just for us. We did it for a broader picture exactly. and for we represented multiple people because, you know, some people are scared and they won't have the courage to do it. And it's brave to do what we did because, as you can see, we got backlash for it. But we're going to stand by it. And, yeah. Do, uh, do any of you guys have your own stories of injustice? And the reason I say that is because I've been, you know, I've, I've had all kinds of stuff happen to me, even guns pulled on me. Do you guys have any stories like that that you don't mind sharing? <laughs> As I think, yeah, you put it best. I mean, no, nah, I don't have any stories I want to share. But just know it's plenty. Anybody else? Rick. Get that microphone, huh? Uh, Stanley, my impression is from from the TV video is that you you weren't uh, close to, at, physically with with Garrett and Elijah. And I think Michael, you were you were there. With the the three of you were I was close to Elijah. next to each other. Yeah. Uh, did you, uh, did you even know that anyone else had had knelt? And what went through you? Just same question I asked Garrett. What went went through your mind at that moment? Um, what went through my mind is how we haven't been out there for the national anthem, like no colleges has. Seeing Cap and after he spoke to, like he got interviewed and he explained why he did it and what he was behind. Even last year, him doing it in my mind, it was if the national anthem came up, I believe in what he believe in. Like he making a point and he doing it in a way that shows, like it shows no violence. And to reiterate what they said, it meant no disrespect to the military, the flag, any of that. I got a cousin that recently retired from the military, and she retired as a sergeant. So I know personally, and I really appreciate what they do because I know how they risk their life. I took a knee because I stand behind what CAP is standing for, and this is my way to get that message out. Yeah. Am I right, though, in that you had no idea that anybody else nah, was? I didn't. Right. Okay. You know, I think it's important, too, talking to Troy Calhoun, um, Air Force's players were totally surprised by it. Um, he, he did mention that whenever that national anthem plays, they click into the proper protocol. I'm not sure that's the right word when it is played. But if you look at their players, they were everywhere all, they weren't in a straight line. It, it, it's just unfortunate that such a critical moment in college football where we could have had an opportunity to make a tremendous statement of solidarity playing the Air Force Academy. What a great opportunity for this football team, quite honestly. It could have been a tremendous opportunity. But because of how it was done, it turned into this firestorm. I mean, uh, you know, I was at Notre Dame uh, after 9-11, and we played Michigan State. And it was an unbelievable moment out on that field when that national anthem was played. So I, I look at that as a tremendous opportunity, quite honestly, that was probably squandered away. But yet, some good will come of this. Some good will come of this. And um, I'm really proud of these players. I'm really proud of this program. Our team is completely unified. I thought about bringing our captains up here or having some other players that weren't involved to show you the kind of statement they would make. Uh, there's no need to do that, I don't think. Um, but um, again, I, I think positive change can come in a lot of different regards, in a lot of different areas. And all we've done since we've been here, and these guys have been here a long time with me now. Kimmy's been here five years with me. Garrett's been here a long time. Sure. Stanley, all these guys. All we've tried to do is make this place better. Make this place better. And these kind of discussions and honest, honest, honesty needs to be had. So maybe we've taken a step in the right direction. Okay. Bob, uh, do you know where the communications breakdown was between your conversation with, with Troy and the referee and the playing of the anthem, which in, in your mind wasn't going to happen? Do you, do you know what the breakdown was? I don't. Great. You guys, uh, any football? I appreciate you guys. Thank no you. Problem. All right.
Now get to class, right? <laughs> you guys go up and grab something to eat. Big Nick's back on our team. Nick Iconvangelo, um, uh, you know, an offensive lineman that made a decision, um, you know, I guess maybe a couple weeks ago. He would no longer be on the team, came back and um, convinced me that he really does want to be part of the team. So, uh, you know, because Nick's about 360 pounds, you notice that out there pretty quick, right? So Nick Iconvangelo is back on our team, yeah. I think you can ask him. You know, he's, um, um, you know, this is a, this college football thing is a, is a, uh, the real deal, right? And you always afford young guys the opportunity to grow, to mature, um, to rebound from decisions. You know, that, 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 that's what college football and the college campus is, right? Has uh, this latest issue been a distraction uh, even during a bye week? I know you're tight. <laughs> distraction. <to lose. laughs> That's kind of an understatement, but there's been there's been a lot of distraction around here, quite honestly. And um, you know, one thing it's not going to do though is affect our football team. You can count on that. Well, it's probably because you guys were the first, don't you think? You know, like. The oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's why I said it was a tremendous opportunity. And maybe it will end up being a great opportunity that if this discussion get it out there and people appreciate the way this football team handled what has come their way with this firestorm. So maybe in the end, if maybe at least people will look at that and consider uh, some of the things we said here today. I know there will only be sound bites taken. Uh, hopefully the whole press conference can be shown somewhere where people can honestly get an idea of what this whole thing was. But we all know at the end of the day, a lot of times people are going to, you know, that's why it's such a chore to continue to work, to unify and bring people together, right? Sometimes, no matter what's said, beliefs are already established. And no matter what you do or what you say is going to change things. But at least the conversation is had. I do hope there's a way this entire press conference can be viewed by people that, um, you know, really anybody that's emailed in, anybody that's, um, certainly there's been a lot of them. Um, you know, I, I don't have the right to give my opinion to anybody, but I do think kind of looking at things in, through a different lens a lot of times makes you feel better about yourself, quite honestly. Focus, All right, man. Focus uh, on the bye week football-wise. What are you trying to type? Yeah, I think, JP, um, you know, you've heard it forever, but we do have to get healthy. I think – just as important, how do we play these last seven games? You know, how do you get yourself physically, mentally at the absolute best you can ever be to play these next seven games? You know, we've got six Mountain West Conference games. We go to College Station and play Texas A&M. And then, you know, we've got some young guys. Um, um, Michael Sewell was up here at safety. They got thrown into the game Saturday night. You know, Stanley Barnwell was up here. He didn't play. Stanley's our really starting safety that alternates in there. Stanley never played a snap. Gurgle goes down. Michael Sewell's in the game, junior college guy that just got here. We have that at several, at several positions. Or if we don't, we know it's coming. So how do you get those next guys ready that when their opportunity comes, they can step in there and do it? That, that's really what this is. You know, how do we position ourselves for these next seven games? All right, man. Thank you. <clears throat>